Okay guys, now I'm going to show you the difference between the Ancestry.com and the 23andMe uh, DNA reports. This is the Ancestry.com one. It came about two weeks after I sent it in, but again it was a busy Black Friday holiday rush. So you might get yours back faster. I know cousins of mine did. But this is what it shows me. It's got these little circles all over the place and over here it explains what they are. And I am 67% from England, Scotland, Wales. How boring. <laughs> I thought I would really have something uh, a little bit more interesting than that. But then 12% uh, Iberian Peninsula, which is like Spain and Portugal. 7% uh, Ireland, Scotland, Wales, which again, it kind of overlaps with Great Britain. So I'm not quite sure how they're deciphering that. Uh, one from the other, really, uh, if both of them cover Scotland and Wales. And then Scandinavia, which is like Norway and Denmark and Europe West, which is, where is Europe West? Oh, okay, that's like Germany and France. All right. Yeah, Belgium, France, Germany, Netherlands. And then if you go down here, you have your DNA story over time, and it starts in the 1700s. Like, here's different ancestors that jumped over this direction and such and yeah it just goes through if it has people that it can connect from your tree it will tell you like oh yeah we know this person was here at this point in time and by the 1800s we were pretty like dominant in this area <laughs> didn't seem to go very far okay now we've got two. Oh, i see And yeah, I could keep showing more, but I'm going to go back to ethnicity for a minute because they also have these low confident regions. Ugh, come on. Low confidence regions. And that includes Europe South, which would be Italy, Greece, that kind of place. And which is 1%, they think. And Asia South, which <laughs> India, Pakistan, Bangladesh. Um, I'm actually really surprised by this in general because I've always been told we have a lot of Russian and a lot of Native American, but this shows like nada. So yeah, that's that's interesting. And then they also have different features where you can see who you're related to, like by their profile, picture, name, that kind of thing. And then you get like DNA stories or DNA circles, sorry. Uh, like this one says William Jordan DNA circle, who would have been my sixth great grandfather. I have like no idea, never heard that name before, but it's very confident that I belong in it. And you can go through it says I have 255 shared ancestor hints. And then of course, 1000 plus fourth cousins or closer. It's funny because my aunt on here actually came up as a cousin. So that's a little bit like, uh, wait, where'd you get that? <laughs> How'd you get that information? Like not aunt, but cousin. But I'm not going to go through that because I'm not going to show you the names of all these people who did not volunteer to be part of this project. Um, but yeah, that's the major points of the Ancestry DNA test once it's finished. Uh, let me click circles and see. Okay, I'm apparently part of 59 DNA circles, and none of these people I've ever heard of, so... But they're all, like, really beyond the time of now, so I'm not worried about showing their names. <laughs> like, it's not a privacy violation if you're no longer with us. But that is Ancestry.com, and that's what it basically looks like in the aftermath. And, of course, there's different features you can play around with, but that's the gist of it. And now this is the 23andMe profile, and it is a lot different because I paid the extra, like, I think $100 to do the um, health profile with it, too. And Ancestry doesn't offer anything like that as far as I'm aware. I kind of only did the Ancestry too because I wanted to connect with uh, family tree profiles and things of that nature. But I found out it kind of does that as well with uh, 23andMe. Okay, so already this one is a good bit different because it has uh, a very, well, you can see it's a very different map and format for how they do it. And it looks like all the places colored in are the places it has connected me to, which is really kind of strange. It's very different than the Ancestry one. Uh, let's see, it says, this one says 63.2% British and Irish, which is significantly different than what the other one said. But then again, they are combining British with Irish. 
Uh, French and German was 16, Scandinavian 2.8, broadly Northwestern European. Oh, I guess that just means that sector in general. Now, Southern Europe is 1.3%, which is really contradictory to what the other one told me. It told me I was about 12% from the Iberian Peninsula, but this one says all across Southern Europe is 1.3%. And that uh, gets down into Sardinia, Balkan, and broadly Southern Europe, which is just all of it. Hmm. Yeah, that's interesting. So, and then 0.3% East Asian and Native American. Oh, see, there's that Native American I was talking about before. It's just really far back there at this point. Uh, it does not say exactly how far back. But 0.2%, that's generations back at this point, but it does exist. And then just sort of, I guess, 0.1, point less than 0.1% from the broadly East Asian and Native American. So that was probably my ancestors who eventually became the Cherokee. Then Oceania, oh, okay, so that would be the Australian continent with Australia and New Zealand. And I am not positive what these little islands are out there, so I'm not going to guess at what they are. And then 0.1% from Sub-Sahara Africa, which, that's a surprise, the other one didn't come up with that at all. And then Unassigned comes up with nothing. And then if you click on see all the regions, it goes through and shows you this whole line of everything. But yeah, that's very different. There's <laughs> absolutely no Asian in my history here that they can detect. Okay, so let me go back and I'm going to show you some of the health stuff without getting too detailed on it. Oh, actually, I'm sorry. Let's see what this maternal hap haplogroup is. Okay, I am maternal haplogroup is H. So, oh, oh, okay. I think it's, it's like a timeline. Like, okay, this was 180,000 years ago. We were down here. Then 65,000 years ago, my ancestors were here. Then up either through this way or maybe that way was 59,000, 57,000 years. And then 18,000 years ago, it hit the H sector and just sort of pinwheeled all over the world. Origins... Oh, 1 in 16 share my group of H. Neanderthal. <laughs> so I am apparently more Neanderthal than 80% of 23andMe customers. The first place out of my family and friends. Yay me. Well, I have the gene from Neanderthals that is associated to having less back hair. And I will agree, I do not have a particularly hairy back. And then the height one, does is, is that mean you're tall or short? Because I tend to be a little taller than the average female. Okay, so... <laughs> oh, wait. Okay. Wow. That's a lot, a lot, a lot of information. Okay, Neanderthal section over here. Now I feel a little uh, Cro-Magnum. Paternal haplogroup. Oh, I see. I don't get a cool map with that one because the Y chromosome messes that up. So, all right, that's not particularly important for this moment then. And, all right, it says I have 1,102 DNA relatives in 23andMe, with most of them being third to fourth cousins, and then many fifth to distant cousins. And look at that, we're almost everywhere. <laughs> we're all over the country! There's a lot more in Texas than I would have thought in Washington. Like, we've we've spread quite farther than I expected. But this does not seem to show me any names, so I'm going to just keep scrolling. Ah, okay, I have to activate the connection portion. So I'm not going to do that and show you all these people I'm related to because they did not volunteer for this. Okay, carrier status. This is for the health part. This is where you want to take a deep breath. Okay, you may see variant not detected for many reports. What does that mean? It means that you are not a carrier for the tested variants. And everything seems to say that, so I'm not even going to bother to look on what it says on the left side. Like, whew, okay. Genetic health risk. Oh, oh I have a slightly increased risk for celiac disease. Wait, is that gluten? 
One variant detected. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Celiac disease. Uh, da, da, da. Are you going to tell me what it is? I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it's the gluten. <laughs> it's the gluten allergy gene. <laughs> oh, my mom wasn't making it up. She really is allergic <laughs> to gluten. We always make fun of her and say she made that up so that she could have <laughs> dietary <laughs> accommodations without the real need. Okay, uh, late onset Alzheimer's and Parkinson's variants not detected. So those are good. Uh, yeah, everything else says nothing seen, at least by what they test. So yay. And my vent kicked on, but let's keep going anyways. This is the traits report. Uh, can smell. Okay, it tells me what I can or cannot do based on my DNA or what, at least what they think. I don't have dimples. I do not have a cleft chin. Um, my earlobes are actually, they are attached. They are not detached. So they got that one weird. Uh, I'm really not clear on my earwax type. That's kind of gross. Uh, brown eyes. They got that. Uh, likely ring finger longer. No, my middle finger is longer. Uh, my cousin has a lot of freckles, but I do not. Straight hair. Likely light hair. Well, by box, but <laughs> not really. Likely little baby hair. I was actually one of the fuzziest headed babies you have ever seen. And so were all of my kids. Photic sneeze reflex? So when they flash the light and you know, I get that. I get that. I sneeze. No red hair. That's correct. Uh, prefer salty. I don't know. I haven't really thought about it. Oh, toe length ratio. Likely big toe longer. It is not. My little, my, my second toe, whatever you call that toe, is longer than my actual big toe. No unibrow. That's pretty correct. And no widow's peak. Okay, that is interesting and strange wellness. I'm likely tolerant to lactose. I am now, but for some reason when I was like a teenager, I was not. Uh, duh, unlikely to flush. Oh, oh, I see. For alcohol. Huh. This is, this is strange and eye-opening and kind of wonderful. I wonder what the saturated fat. Okay kind of recommending how I can manage my weight better based on my DNA. That's really cool. All right, guys, I'm probably going to call this, but if I had to pick a favorite, I would definitely say it's 23andMe because you still can connect with the relatives. Plus, you can pay the extra and find out all sorts of things about your health, which Ancestry doesn't offer at this point in time. So, I mean, between the two of them, I feel like I definitely got my money's worth. I think I paid $100 for this and $80 for the Ancestry DNA on the Black Friday specials. So I definitely feel like it was worth it to get the really good... Um, uh, health clearance on it. Now I know I'm probably not likely to get Parkinson's or Alzheimer's, so that's good. I know my mom's not a liar about having a gluten allergy like we all suspected. So 100% unsponsored, unpaid for review. I would definitely pick 23andMe if I could only pick one and I obviously knew everything I know now. So I hope that's been helpful and I will see you in the next video.